It pleases the daughter of Marlanis to inform you and your eight-legged brother of the fate of your tarn and of the homestone you sought. Nar's mandibles opened and closed once in annoyance. That is the nearest to anger I have ever seen my gentle brother come. You will release me immediately. You are free now. It is well that you obey my command. Perhaps your death will be made easier in consequence. Who could refuse anything to the daughter of an Ubar? Good luck in the swamps. Well, brother, shall we continue our journey? Not all humankind are as contemptuous of the spider people as that daughter of the Ubar. Indeed, brother. He must protect me. Why? Because I need your help. You need not have made me say that. Do you ask my favor? Yes, stranger. I, the daughter, the Ubar of Ar, ask your favor. I ask you to protect me. You tried to kill me. For all I know, you may still be an enemy. I know what you are waiting for. I submit myself. I accept your submission. I wish you well. Health and safety to you, brother, and all your people. I do not ask your name, warrior, nor will I repeat the name of your city before the submitted one. But I know that you and your city are respected by the spider people. Thank you. My city and I are honored. Beware the daughter of the Ubar. She has submitted herself. Let's go. They had been waiting for about 20 and when the girl suddenly screamed. Tarl spun around, and she had sunk to her waist in the marsh water. She had slipped into a pocket of quicksand. She cried out hysterically. Cautiously, he tried to approach her, but felt the ooze slipping away beneath his feet. The girl sank deeper in the mire the surface of the water circling her armpits. She was screaming wildly, all control lost in the face of the slow, ugly death awaiting her. Don't struggle. Your veil. Unwind it. Throw it to me. Her hands tried to tear at the veil, but she was unable to unwind it. In her terror and in the moment of time left to her, then the muck crept upward to her horrified eyes, and her head slipped under the greenish water, her hands clutching wildly at the air. He frantically looked about, caught sight of a half-submerged log some yards away. It was protruding up out of the marsh water. Regardless of the possible danger, he splashed to the log, jerking on it, hauling on it with all his might for what seemed like hours, but it must have only been a matter of a few seconds. It gave, leaving, le leaping upward out of the mud. He frantic, he half-carried, half-floated it, shoving it toward the place where the daughter of the Ubar had slipped under the water, clung to the log floating in the shallow water over the quicksand, and reached down again and again into the mire. At last, his hand clutched something, <clears throat> the girl's wrist, and he drew her slowly upward out of the sand. If you had been a true warrior, you would have taken me on the back of your tarn, above the clouds, even before we had passed the outermost ramparts of Ar, and you would have thrown my robes to the streets below to show my people what had been the fate of the daughter of their Ubar. <laughs> well, warrior, what would you have me do? Remove your clothing. I told you, I am not going to take any more chances with you. I have to find out if you have any more weapons. 
No man may look upon the daughter of the Ubar. Either you will remove your robes, or I shall. Don't move. You're covered with a crossbow. <laughs> well done, men of our. I'm sorry about your father. <laughs> he was an Ubar of Ubars. The life of the Ubar is uncertain. He must have known it would happen sometime. Did he speak to you about it? <laughs> Are you of core or not? I have not seen my father, except on the days of public festivals. High caste daughters and R are raised in the walled gardens like flowers until some high-born suitor, preferably an ubar or administrator, will pay the bride price set by their fathers. You mean you never knew your father? Is it different in your city, warrior? Yes. Primitive though it might be, the family is respected and maintained. He wondered if that might be due to the influence of his father, whose earthways sometimes seemed at variance with the rude customs of gore. I think I might like that. What is your city, warrior? Not R. May I ask your name? I am Tarl. Is that a used name? No, it is my true name. Talina is my true name. <laughs> you are Tarl Cabot of Korova, are you not? I knew it. How? That ring? It bears the crest of Cabot. Administrator of Korva, and you, you are the son Tarl, whom the warriors of Korva were training in the arts of war. The spies of R are effective. More effective than the assassin of R, Pakur, R's master assassin, was dispatched to kill you, but failed clearly. I can force you to take me. How? Like this. <laughs> now you must take me with you, or slay me. And I know you cannot slay me. He cursed her, for she took unfair advantage of the warrior codes of gore. What is the submission of Tolena, the daughter of the Ubar, worth? Nothing. But you must accept it, or slay me. To Talena's indignation, he snapped the slave bracelets on her wrist, bound her, put her on a leading chain. If you would be a captive, you will be treated as a captive. I accept your submission, and I intend to enforce it. <laughs> oh, yes. Do.